Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today. Tuesday, the 26th of March, 2024. I'm carrying the magic of doing. Open Heavens is authored by that name, the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General of the Sea of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Father, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to learn at your feet. Thank you for daily loading us with your benefit. Thank you for sending your word to us again. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will shine your light unto us through your word. You will give us understanding and reveal yourself to us even more in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic for today is Learn from Elders. Learn from Elders. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Exodus 18, verse 19. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. Our Bible reading is taken from Exodus 18, 1-24. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian and the father-in-law of Moses, heard of everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel, and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife, Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro received her and her two sons. One son was named Gershon, and, the, and Moses said, I have come have become a foreigner in a foreign land. And the other was named Eliezer, for he said, My father's God was my helper. He saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' son and wife, came to him in the wilderness, where he was camped near the mountain of God. Jethro had sent word to him, I, your father-in-law, Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hands of the Egyptians. He said, Praise be to the Lord who rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and of Pharaoh who rescued the people from the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods, for he did this to those who have treated Israel arrogantly. Then Jethro, Moses' father in law, brought a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God, and Aaron came with the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father in law in the presence of God. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him from morning till evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge, while all those people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and those people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. You must be people's representative before God and bring that dispute to him. Teach them his decrees and instruction and show them the way. Show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. Or select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who ate the sonest gain, and appoint them as officials towards hundreds, thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide themselves. That will make you load lighter. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and go and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and all those people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Praise to Lord. Hallelujah. The message. Many young people these days see their elders as old school and think that they can do without them they are making a big mistake 
I know there's a lot of advancement in science and technology these days, and that the youth have more access to information than ever before. But no matter how many resources they have, there is one thing the elders have that they do not, and that is experience. The elders have walked the path you are walking now and can tell you the outcome of whatever you are doing. Even before you start, they have experienced far more than internet search. The internet search engine can show you. Some of them have made mistakes in the past that, don't have to, that you don't have to make if only you let them guide you. The problem, however, is that many youths think that they are very wise and such thoughts can put them in trouble. There's a popular saying in Africa that what an elder sees while sitting on a chair, the child cannot see it, even if the claims and even if he climbs an Iroko tree. I learned a lot from the late Pa S. G. Elton, though there were bits of advice he gave at the time that I thought were wrong. Today I now know that he was totally right. Thank God I listened to him. There are things about yourself that you don't know and cannot see, but an elder will see them and advise you appropriately. Proverbs 30 verse 12 says, There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. You could think that you, your talent and knowledge are enough to make you successful, but an elder will point your attention to a character flaw that you must get rid of if you really want to be successful. When you, when you are employed in an organization, respect those who have been there long before you. In church, give ears to what the elders have to say at all. Don't neglect the advice of your parents, grandparents, uncles, and aunties. When you do this, they will share some of their valuable experiences with you. And it will help. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Wisdom, Isaiah 11, verse 2, you will be able to put all their bits of advice together wisely. This will give you an unparalleled advantage over your peers in the journey of life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic once more is learn from elders. Learn from elders. So today our daddy in the Lord is speaking to us through the help of the Holy Spirit that we should learn from elders. And like he has said, he said a lot of young people have seen elders to be old school. Perhaps because of the advancement of technology, you know, of science. Now you have so much access to information. And whenever they want to advise you, you might think that, oh, you, you don't have an experience in this particular aspect. So you really can't advise me. You know, probably technology was not as so advanced in their old time. And you feel that they cannot advise you. They are old school. They are, they are not, you know, they can't, they... You know, they are not in, in tune with what is happening. But, you know, like the popular saying, there is really nothing new under the sun. Because at the end of the day, it might not be in the, your own exact way, but they have done a lot, even in similar ways. You know, so at the end of the day, there's really nothing new under the sun. And it will be a big mistake if you are not taking advantage of their wise counsels that they are giving you. Praise to Lord. What, like her daddy said, he said, it's, it's such a person who is not listening, taking to their advice. Who is feeling that, you know, they are old school? Who is feeling that they don't have as much, you know, they are not as innovative as you can be? You might actually be putting yourself in trouble if you are not careful. You know, this, most of these elders are giving us advice. Sometimes in that path, you know, on that road that you are trying to walk past it, they have actually gone through that particular road before, you know, and they can tell you, perhaps they have even made some mistakes. Perhaps they have even made some similar mistakes that you are making and you are trying to see a, a way out. And they can tell you, maybe they made that mistake. They were able to come out of it well, better and bigger. They can tell you how they went about it, you know, and if they would not even, if it even affected them, they can quickly tell you, don't. Like, don't go on this particular road. It can lead to destruction. 
So that at the end of the day, what does that mean? You won't have to make mistakes like they have made. And like we have been told that you might have you might have access to a lot of informations and resources. But there is one thing that gives the elder an edge, and that is experience. And that is what experience. Praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. So it gives them an edge, regardless of whatever information and access that you think you have. Like the popular saying in Yoruba land that whatever the elder is saying while sitting down, even if the youth or the younger one is standing on a tall tree, he will not be able to see it. Why? Because the elder is much more experienced. You know, and they can you if you engage them well, you can see that they will relate it with their own, you know, time and be able to give you good counsel. So the word of God is coming to us right now. That we should not neglect the advice of our elders. We should not just throw it and think that it is rubbish. Like our daddy in the Lord said, he said, thank God that he listened to the advice of late for SGLT. He said, even though at that time, he thought some of them were wrong, but as he grew older, he realized that he was absolutely right. I'm sure while we were growing up, there are times that our parents would have given us some advices and we have felt that they were, their own was too much. They were becoming overbearing. But as we grow older, we are thanking God for the type of training they gave us. That is just how it is too. When you see elders and you think, no, as you grow older, as you mature in that particular stage and that particular time, uh, perhaps, I pray that, you know, you won't learn in the hard way. Maybe if something had happened, you now realize that, wow, I should have listened to them. That would not be a portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're also told you could be successful. You might be doing fantastically well. But then, an elder will be able, you might have the talent, you might have, you know, the knowledge, you might have the skill. But if an elder can tell you in that aspect, your character flow, that can affect your success at the end of the day, that can affect, you know, the, long, the, the endurance of that, if your, your success will endure or not. And so don't get rid of them. Don't think because of the wealth that you have suddenly acquired, and probably because of their age, they are not working again. They are not as they don't have the wealth that you have anymore. You just feel that because of that, you are more knowledgeable. Or perhaps because they are not working. You know, they are mostly sitting at home watching TV, just going to some limited places. You think they are dead, but the experience they have is already in them. And we should take advantage of it. Like we've been uh, you know advised. That when we, our, when we get to organization, those that are there before us, we should listen to the advice. In our churches, our parents, our grandparents, you know, there were times during my secondary school days, or probably my, I, I, I think my secondary school, there are some persons, you know, in that you would have come, uh, you know, come in contact with. And you see that, you know, they, they kind of sound more advanced, you know. They, are, they might be your peer group, they might be your age mate, but the way they will talk, the way they will relate, and you can almost tell that these are people that dine with the elders. Because, you know, the way they, they give advice, you can tell that it's either that they are very close to their parents, who teaches advice for them at every point in time, or they, they, are, they lived with their grandparents, or they are just, they have a lot of elders around them, and you could tell the difference in them. So when we come in contact with elders, let us take advantage of the advice that they will give up to us so that we can have unparalleled advantage over our peers. And I pray that as they give us advice, just like that in the Lord has also said, that the Holy Spirit will help us, even putting all this advice together, to, together wisely to navigate life in Jesus' name. Amen. The key point, the elder in your life are there to guide you with their experience. Listen to them and honor them. The Lord will give us the grace to listen and to honor them. Because if you honor them, if you respect them, then you will gain a lot from them. But if you are disrespectful, you love to shush them, to shut them up every time now and then, then you are just doing yourself a disadvantage. The grace to honor the elders around us. So that we can get great advices from them. The Lord will give us to us. And as we get it, we'll use them wisely to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review. God bless you. Amen.